Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll diagnose and repair the air suspension on the GL Mercedes X164 chassis. As you can see the car is sitting low on the rear, where the rear left corner is the lowest and the right corner is a bit higher. I wanted to have a quick check to establish whether we have a problem with both rear corners or just one corner is pulling the other side lower which gonna be the left side in this case as it's his slower. I'm using the Maxxis 906 which have access to the suspension control module. As you can see we have no faults stored so let's see if we have any useful live data pins. We can see from live data that the rear left corner is the lowest corner as it sits 190 mm below the reference point for this car which is minus 30 mm. I strongly believe that the other corners are sitting lower than normal because the rear lift has collapsed totally. We can see as well that the pressure has leaked almost totally from the air spring compared to the others. The other air springs should sit around 10 bars if they are normal. However, the opposite corner to the leaking spring may sit at lower pressure and still be normal. In this case, the front right sits around 6 bars and that's due to the seesaw effect. One corner sits low, lifts the opposite corner high and causes a pressure drop inside. Mind the glitch in the scan tool where it doesn't read the actual value right away. I already tried to use soapy water and trace the leak with no luck and you will see why at the end of the video. For now I'm gonna go ahead and replace the air spring and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Lift the car and secure it then remove the wheel. In this car it is harder to remove the air spring from the outer side of the car so let's remove it from the inner side. To do that I'll remove the height sensor. It is one 10 mm screw and two T25 Torx head. I'm using the Arno 2596 air spring which is a good OEM alternate for fracture of the price. There will be some minor differences when it comes to the installation process that I will explain later in the video. Use a 10 mm to undo the pressure fitting and consider allowing it to leak slowly if the spring is still pressurized. After that, press on the springs with your hands and get it out of there. Out of the old and in with the new. Three things to notice in the new one. The pressure fitting is pre-installed but don't remove it. It has a transportation plug. The lower locating tab where it is supposed to be aligned in the control arm and the location of the upper protective cover. Note that in the OEM spring the orientation of this cover is specific unlike the Arnold spring. Remove the old spring holder and install the new one that came with the kit. In my case the old one broke during spring removal. 
Now squeeze the spring in place and attach the lower part first to allow the locating tab mates with the control arm. Then push the spring towards the top until it locks with the upper spring holder. Now let's remove the old pressure fitting from the hose as the new one came with it pre-installed. The OEM spring will come without one, so don't remove it if you're installing an OEM spring. Remove the inner ring first, then pull out the rest of the fitting, make sure not to damage the hose. Pull out the protective cover from the new fitting to get it ready. Clean the tip of the hose and push it all the way into the new fitting, then pull it back to make sure it locked. If it didn't, just do it again. Well, let's put back the height sensor and if you don't have a scan tool like mine, then install the wheel and drop the car down just below its normal ride height. Then start the engine and wait until the car lifts to its normal ride height. Note that the lower arm of the sensor has a locating tab that should go into the control arm. In my case, I used the scan tool to inflate the air spring to check for leaks before lowering the car. With the spring pressurized, I used some soapy water to check for leaks around the air fitting, which turned out to be leak free. I then installed the wheel and torqued it to 150 Nm. Watch the video to the end if you want to know why I couldn't trace the leak with the spring installed in the car.
At the bench, I used the hand pump to barely inflate the spring, which made it pop fully open and exposed the leak that couldn't be seen with the spring in the car. If you pause the video, you will be able to spot the location of the leak before you see the bubbles. Thank you boys and girls for watching and remember if you are not a subscriber consider subscribing. Bye bye.